Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Becky and I welcome you to my muscle function video series. This week I'm going to be going over one of the three major segments of the erector spinae. So this is pretty much the first week of the erector spinae muscles. I'm dividing this muscle up into three different weeks only because it has three bigger segments to it, okay? There's a medial, a middle, and a lateral uh, portion to it. So with each larger portion, there's actually three smaller segments to each section, okay? Each of the mini segments, or the little smaller muscles, okay, are each called uh, whichever, you know, bigger segment, and then it'd be the capitus, the cervicus, and the thoracus, okay? So, for instance, today we're going to be going over the spinalis muscle. So, we have the spinalis capitus, the spinalis cervicus, and the spinalis thoracus, okay? I will go over the origin insertion functions and exercises so you know how to work it, okay? I will try to show you where it is on my body and give um, a roundabout area, but again, I do apologize if I point in the wrong, uh, or I guess the wrong area, not that it'd be completely wrong, but it may be a little bit off due to the fact I can't see myself pointing on the back of myself. I'll be facing away from the camera whenever I do so. Just know that it's a roundabout in that area. It may not be that exact pointed area, but it's right there within the vicinity of it. Okay, so again, this week we're going to be going over the spinalis muscle, okay, which is the medial portion of the erector spinae, meaning it is the closest to the spine, all right? So let's get started with the spinalis capitis. Now, the spinalis capitis is originated on the lower half of the ligamentum nuge, and then also the spinous processes of C3 to T3 and then inserts onto the mastoid process and the superior nuchal line. All right, so let's give a location here so we know exactly what we're talking about as far as this muscle goes. So again, the origin of it is on the lower half of the ligamentum nuchae and the spinous processes of C3 to T3. So we're looking pretty much right dead center on your spinal column. Okay, you're looking pretty much right in here, okay? That lower half, the ligamentum nuchae, and the spinous processes of C3 to T3, okay? And then the insertion would be on the mastoid process, which is right about in here. It's pretty much right behind your ear, a little bit below, right there it is. It's the bony portion right beneath and a little bit diagonally behind your ear, all right? And then also the superior line of the nuchal, superior nuchal line, excuse me, which is on the back of the occipital bone, right about in there. Okay, so again, the mastoid process is right in here, right behind the ear, and also that superior nuchal line is right in here. Okay, now that is the spinalis capitis. Moving on to the spinalis cervicus, we're looking at an origin of the supraspinous ligament of T3 to T6 and then inserting onto the transverse processes of C1 to C3. Okay, now that supraspinous ligament is pretty much right dead center of your spine. So right along the little bumps that run right down your spine. All right, now that is T3 to T6. Okay, so that's right about in here, almost a little bit between your shoulder blades. Okay, right about in here. That is the origin of it. And then the insertion would be on the transverse processes of C1 to C3. Now that's off to the side of the center of your spine, just a little bit. Okay, it's just kind of offset to one side, just a little bit. And also, moving on to the third spinalis muscle, which is the spinalis thoracus, we're looking at an origin of the spinous process of T, 
excuse me, L2 to T11. And then inserting on the spinous processes of T6 to T1. Okay, so again, the origin of the spinalis thoracus muscle would be on the spinous process, again, that's pretty much right dead center, okay, of L2 up to T11. Now that's lower back, okay, that includes a little bit of your lumbar spine and up including your thoracic spine as well. So you're looking about right in this region, it may be a little bit higher, lower, give or take, or a little bit shorter, but it's right about in that region. Okay, again, I don't know if I pointed that out good enough for you. Again, it's right about in here. Okay. And then inserts onto the spinous processes of T6 to T1. Okay, so we're looking all the way up here. Okay, pretty much right in between the shoulder blades is where it inserts onto. Alright. Now, keep in mind also that there are actually two sides of the erector spinae muscles. Okay, so you would actually have a set of erector spinae muscles on the left and erector spinae muscles on the right. Okay, so whenever you work the erector spinae, it, you can work it unilaterally, unilaterally, excuse me, or you can work it bilaterally. All right, so as far as functions go, we're looking at the spinalis capitis and the spinalis cervicus doing uh, a lot of what the cervical part of the spine, the neck, the head. Okay, we're looking at using it bilaterally, we're looking at, you know, extension of the neck. Okay, we're also looking at lateral flexion of the neck using it unilaterally, unilaterally, excuse me. So if I want to use this side of the erector spinae muscles, I would just move my head like so, okay? Also, using this side, I can turn my head like so, okay? That's just rotating my head to the same side that I'm using that muscle. Okay, same goes for this side. If I want to use this side of the erector spinae muscles, I can do a lateral flexion, okay? Or I can rotate my head to that side, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. It, now moving on to the spinalis thoracus muscle, we're looking at more, more of thoracic motion. Okay, so we're looking at back extensions, um, pretty much anything dealing with any type of back extension. Uh, we're looking at lateral flexion. Okay, and that this would be using one side. So if I want to use just this side, we could just bend to one side. Using this side, okay, also we can have anterior pelvic tilt, <coughs> excuse me, okay, which is tilting your hips forward or dumping the bucket forward. So just as back extension goes, okay, we can rotate our hips forward here, okay? If we have them posteriorly rotated, remember our butt is tucked in, but if we anteriorly rotate it, it looks like we're dumping the pail of water out towards the front, okay? Or we're sticking our butt out, okay? So as far as any questions on any scientific terms such as the spinous process or the ligament tendinitae, you can either ask me through the comments or you can go ahead and look them up yourself if you have any questions on those. Also, the spinalis thoracus muscle, the insertion of it can be varied. It's uh, not constant uh, in some studies or some sources. There may be some differentiation uh, in where it actually inserts onto. There are different opinions out there. Um, also, the uh, erector spinae muscles all together work better whenever your pelvis is posteriorly rotated, only because this uh, 
brings the origin of them closer to the muscle, putting less strain on them so they're able to work and function a whole lot better. Now as far as uh, exercises go, you're looking at um, some exercises that you don't necessarily see in the gym. You can work the spinous capitis and the spinous cervicus by doing some head bends, okay? You can do them with no weight. You can do them with the band on your head, okay? So you can do like so, and I'll provide some uh, further examples here in the video or more uh, specific e examples. I'll try to edit them in here, but if I don't get them in here, you can attach, um, so I've seen it before, you can attach a band right here and attach it to a post, okay, and you can do this, okay, or you can do this side and go like this, okay, you can use no band and rotate your head like so and just work it like that. Now as far as the spinalis thoracus muscle, you're looking at any types of back extension using like the 45 degree um, bench or you know Superman, pretty much any type of back extension. Deadlifts will also work the erector spinae muscle. Uh, so you're looking at anything that brings uh, the body upright or the spine upright against any type of gravity uh, will work the erector spinae muscles, okay? enjoyed uh, the video. Um, I did try to make some new edits and so on and so forth. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't, please give me some options or comments. If you have any questions again about any scientific terms or anything regarding the erector spinae, please try to keep it towards the spinalis muscle. But if you have any uh, questions regarding the erector spinae muscle, Please feel free to ask in the comments. Please feel free to share it with a friend and invite somebody to watch the next one. Hope everybody has a great and productive week. See you guys later. Thanks.